The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be reading from the book of Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 8, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, and verse 5. The book of Acts, chapter 8, and verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man called Simon, who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is a great power of God. And they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. But when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, both men, and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed, seeing the miracles and signs which were done. Now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they went. They sent Peter and John to them, who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw that through the laying on the, of the apostles' hands the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, Your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this your wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. Then Simon answered and said, Pray to the Lord for me, that none of the things which you have spoken may come upon me. So when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. Amen. Samaria, a region which was occupied in history by the ten tribes of Israel, in other words, all the tribes apart from Judah and Benjamin. But because of sin and idol worshipping especially because they had made according to Jeroboam, the first king of the divided Israel, they worshipped two oxen in Bethel and prayed and said, You are our God. And they sacrificed to these oxen, but they did not stop there. Not only did not they repent, but they went even further with more sinning of backsliding, apostasy, transgression. As a result, God permitted judgment upon these people, sending the Assyrians and the king who destroyed the temples, the altars, that brought into captive and in exile most of the people of Israel, the ten tribes of Israel. And at the same time, they brought other people from Babylon and Syria. And so, there was blood mix of the rest of the ten tribes of Israel with those who just migrated from Syria. And a new people were created, I'll be bold enough to say, the Samaritans, who were made up of the ten tribes of Israel. So therefore, they had the word of God. And they also remained only in the five books of the Old Testament and did not accept the prophets and the psalmist. And when they tried to sacrifice with the people of Israel in Jerusalem, 
the Jews of those times outcast them and thought of them as a sect, heresy, people who are defiled because of their doctrine. And so the Samaritans were forced to make a new altar in Samaria, in the Mount Gorizim, where they said that this was the first place that Moses commanded for God to be worshipped at, in contrary with the Jews who said in Jerusalem. Later on, other the exile of the people of Israel, when Nehemiah returned, then they drew close to Nehemiah and the Jews to build together the temple and the wall, but the people of God, Nehemiah, said, there's nothing common between you and us. Christ came, who changed everything, and the divisions, and the walls, and the human structure, and hates and passions, and he preached to a sinful woman, the Samaritan woman, there in Sikar, and everyone believed in Christ, but the time of Samaria had not come yet. The time of Samaria would come after a great persecution in Jerusalem. A great church was created by power of the Holy Spirit in Jerusalem with the apostles, with the elders, with the deacons, with power, faith in the Holy Spirit. But this had to spread throughout all the world. And this was done with the most suitable way, because no, with no any other way could they accept the Jews, the Christian Jews, for the gospel to preach to the nations and even to the Samaritans, in which there was a great division between, a great divide. But God brought persecution, allowed persecution, and all instead of the twelve apostles abandoned Jerusalem and were found out of. Judah and Philip in Samaria. And then in Samaria, the Samaritans had among them someone who was called Simon the Sorcerer, who practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great, the great power of God, because for a long time he astonished everybody. And so, all these people, not having the right, if you permit the expression, the right faith of the Word of God, and having inside of them other mixes, which are worldly, human, and also doctrines, they were convinced easily that the power of God, the great power of God, was brought to Samaria through Simon the Sorcerer. Until suddenly was revealed before them a deacon of the church, Philip. But Philip wasn't alone. Philip was sent by Jesus, and Jesus was with him. With the result, his words were powerful in the Holy Spirit. They found an audience in the hearts of people as he spoke to them about the kingdom of God and about the name of Jesus Christ. And Christ, who was with them, co-witnessed in his words with signs and wonders. So many paralyzed and lame were healed, and many who had unclean spirits were freed. And the evil spirits came out screaming with a great voice. So everybody who heard the words of Philip who had two characteristics from heaven. Firstly, he was sent by Jesus. And secondly, Christ was with him. His word broke and hit the works of the devil in the people's hearts. So everyone could believe. And as they did believe, and they were taught about the will of God, they were baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for the remission of sins. Among them, and Simon, seeing the great things that God did, the actions of God, the glory of God, 
he also believed in the name of Jesus Christ. He also believed in the kingdom of heaven. And the Bible says he remained waiting for Philip. His eyes, therefore, even though he believed, he never turned to God, to Jesus, but his eyes were upon Philip, seeing how he worked, how God worked with him. The result was that he repented, he was baptized in the name of Jesus, and maybe even when later on they heard in Jerusalem from the church that Samaria believed, and they sent Peter and John, who, seeing that the Holy Spirit had not been outpoured yet, they prayed and they laid their hands upon them and they received the Holy Spirit. Maybe, but not with assurance, maybe Simon also received the Holy Spirit. The Bible doesn't say so. But what the Bible does say is that Simon, even though he believed, he never repented. Never. His heart remained in the same things and the same desires. God acted in his life. God worked in his life. God changed his life. God regenerated him. Philip baptized him in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. But his heart remained in the same things. With all assurance, Philip would have said to him, what Christ said, if someone wants to come after me, he must deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. But he, in this word of his, which is clear for every Christian, in which Christ visits and changes life, that now he must follow Jesus. In this word, Simon the sorcerer gave no importance to. But he clung on to Philip and he followed Philip because his heart was never freed by the desires that he had for power, for authority and for glory. His heart was never freed from his desires of his heart, his heart which was deceitful above all things and desperately wicked as all people's hearts are. He never condemned even though he was reborn, even though he was baptized in the water. And as we said, maybe he was even baptized in the Holy Spirit. Since the Bible says, and everyone received the Holy Spirit, when they laid their hands on them, Peter and John. But what remained in Simon's heart was the desires of other things. He might have overcome, even though we don't know, the desires of his flesh by being regenerated, but he never ever overcame the desires of his eyes and the arrogance of life. He never loved Jesus. That's why Christ never ever had known him. He never sought the obedience. He never heard the grace that saves, that was revealed to the Samaritans. And he taught the Samaritans to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts and to walk in this perverse generation just righteously, godly, in reverence, waiting for the appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ. This continued. Even though God intervened in his life to live, to think, to desire, and to want not the things of the Spirit, but the things of the flesh. So much so, that he was never sanctified. He never received the grace of God inside of him, to dwell inside of him. 
and to cast out the sin that dwelt in his flesh. He remained, he remained ungodly, evil, unjust, even though he was reborn and baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. He remained the same even though Christ changed him because he did not repent. He did not come to his senses. He did not understand that his heart was a cleansed. His heart never became upright before God. He did not understand that he never obtained the heart of God. He never realized that God is holy and He will rapture holy people. He never understood, never, that God's inviting him to a new way in which He had prepared for him into a fight of holiness for the glory of God. He never ever understood that faith that was given once to the saints is this faith that is activated among the believers. And my beloved brethren, this was Simon. before God. And each one of us though has a name, a history, a past, a present and also a future before God. And God wants, as He says in the epistle to the Thessalonians, and I want us to read this please all together. It's the letter of Paul to Thessalonians, the last chapter in verse 23. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 23. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. Simon never understood that he had to be sanctified completely so he can be preserved holy. Your spirit and your soul and your body preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He never understood these things. That God wants holiness Complete holiness. So, he can confess in that day that I know you. I've known you because you have loved me. You've loved me with pure hearts. With a good conscience and a faith that's not hypocr hypocrisy. You've loved your brethren as I've loved you. And that's why your intentions and your desires and He, my brethren, I want to remain as much as God permits me. For you to walk not with your will, but the will of God. Not what you like to do but what God likes. And your decision not to be according with your heart, but according with the heart of God. Because then, and only then, if you live according to the Spirit, you will live according to the Spirit. Because a person who lives according to the Spirit, but who does not walk according to the Spirit, who stands upright in the word of truth but never walks out 
the word of truth. In vain he fights. In vain. He speeds to go and worship Christ, but his heart is far from it. So it's a chance that God has given us today, to all of us, without exceptions, men, women, children, grandparents, for them to try Him and afterwards to stand before the table of the Lord, to try out themselves to see, test themselves to see if their walk isn't according to appearance. Isn't according to the flesh. And the decision isn't according to the hearts. Their hearts. If their hearts isn't upright before God. Because then, the things that Simon did, who will do if I'm not careful? And what Peter said to Simon, the word of God will say to us, with a heart that does not repent, with a heart that wasn't upright before the Lord, sincere, but completely opposite, contrary to Job, who was just, holy, godly, shunning evil, blameless, with a heart that desires the nice things that other people offer, or the, or the rest. He judges and decides with what his eyes like. Like Eve, Eve saw that the fruit was nice in appearance, tasty, good in taste, and great because he gave knowledge. And even though there was a word of God, Immovable, stable, steadfastly, then eat from the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and bad, because you will die. Eve not only was deceived, according to the flesh, the soul and spirit, but she was deceived. Adam also. As a result, their continuation to be through Cain, and by the grace of God through Abel, and later on through Seth. Beloved brethren, I repeat, we all have a past, a history, a testimony, a confession. We all have a present today that we came to church. But we must not forget that we all have got a future also. And the future depends on our hearts. That's why God cries out, My son, give me your heart. Because from it spring all the issues of life. And today, God calls to us, we can give him our hearts completely. For, our, for him to make our hearts upright before him. To make our hearts according to his heart. For him to cleanse our hearts. Because it is written, Blessed are those who are clean in heart, because they, and only they, will see the face of the Lord. They will see God. And the cleansing of the heart isn't done by only by repentance, by confessing the sin, and by the blood of Jesus. As a conscience cannot be cleansed, but only by repentance, with confession, and with the blood of Jesus. But also our walk, from today and now on, will not be pleasing before God if it's not by faith and in the mind of Christ. Who in the form of God existed, did not think it robbery to be equal with God, but he accepted to empty out himself from his glory. He accepted to put on the form of a bondservant. Do you accept this? Do you accept to deny yourself and to empty yourself out from your knowledge, 
from your experiences, from your counsels, from the desires that you have in your heart. Your opinion. And for you to put on a form of a bond servant. And for you to become like the holy men and women of God. As Moses, who the Bible says that he denied to be called the daughter, the son of the daughter of Pharaoh, because he judged it better to suffer with the people of God than to have temporary enjoyment of sin. And I won't say sin, but just enjoying life. Don't care about enjoying. That's what your heart wants. Ask for you to be happy and delightful in the presence of God. And judge for yourself to suffer rather with the people of God. If and since you judge that the reproach of Christ is greater wealth and greater glory than all the treasures of this world. And this will happen only if today we make the steadfast decision to renew and from now on to look upon what's eternal, immovable, unshakable, heavenly and not in the temporary things, things that can be shaken and the earthly things. And since he became like men, he was found as a man, in the form of a man. And then he humbled himself. The miracle. And then, then when he found an appearance as a man, he was not revealed as a king, but he revealed himself as a servant. As a servant who serves, confessing that he did not come to be served, but to serve. Then he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the will of God, to the point of death. Something that Simon didn't even think of, that he must become obedient to the point of death. And our Lord suffered the death of a cross. For that reason, and only for that reason. Not because He was the Word of God that became man. But only because of this reason, because He humbled Himself until death, becoming obedient to the point of the death of a cross. That's why God highly exalted Him. And gave him the name which is above every name. That the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven. And those on earth and those under earth. And the question is now. Who do you want to exalt you? Who do you want to exalt you? Someone went and said. Take money. Because I want to become big and great like you guys. Give me this authority. I want to pray for people to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Because I want to be great. Christ said, I want to be small. He was threatened, but he threatened no one. He suffered, but he hurt no one. He never demanded or claimed his right, his justice or his authority, and never used his power. But what he did, he did always for the glory of his Father. And he became small, the least. Cursed upon the cross of Calvary. The only person who God turned his face from. Because upon him gathered all the sins of the world. I sanctify with him. So those who are mine will be sanctified. A great mystery this. Who do you want to be exalted by? What do you want your future to be like? 
You might become rich. You might obtain power. You might obtain authority. You might even perform miracles and cast out demons. And you might pray and people to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. But the hypocrite will not have hope when God will come to rapture him. Lord, he won't have hope. He will never be glad in the presence of God. He will never see the glory of God. He will never see the face of God. Because he asked according to his wicked heart, his desires. And he never understood that Christ invites him to a new path, a holy path, a new fight, a fight of glory and holiness in an inheritance that's eternal, heavenly, where throughout eternity will reign. My brethren, today, we who are reborn, baptized in the water, baptized in the Holy Spirit, most of us, today let all of us repent. Today let's bring our hearts before Christ. Today let's confess that we stumble in many things. Today let's condemn in the name of Jesus Christ everything that God doesn't like. Everything that saddens the Holy Spirit. Today let's confess even our hidden sins which burden our hearts. And today let's seek the face of the Lord and the power of of his resurrection because this will take us to heaven. Amen.